Welcome to part 3 of this build series. I have now received the extrusions I was missing for the bed assembly and I can now get the bed in the correct position. I'm calling this version of the printer the RIF 600 and the large one is the RIF 900. I have received some flex plates for this. These are 310 by 310 so they will overlap the heat beds and I will attach the magnetic base but of course I need to make sure that everything is flat before I do that. I'm grateful for all the comments and I got a good one this time. A suggestion of lowering the stepper motor by using a spacer to get more Z height. If you need that it sounds like a good idea. We're ready to install the Y axis rails and these are 650 millimeters. On the RIF 900 these would be 950 millimeters. And I'm just adding some T nuts and M3 bolts. Remember to block the rail from sliding as it could fall off when handling the rail. I'm using MGN 12 on this build, but I could have used MGN 9, it wouldn't matter much. We can now slide the rail in, and as you can see I haven't used every attachment point, you don't really need that. With the rails in, we can find the position of the rails and these should be all the way back to the Y motors, to the front of the Y motors, like this. And we can then center the rails. I'm using some of the jigs from the tool folder in the Voron 24 or Trident builds. You'll save a lot of time and get much better results when using jigs wherever possible. As I now know that the rails are in the correct position, I'll tighten them. I'll then add some end plates and these are just to make the printer look a bit cleaner. I'm printing some parts that will prevent the carriage from sliding off the rail and these are also from a Voron build. I'm not using any flexible material in this build but I use some on my door handles for the Voronish one. It's nice to work with TPU. We'll then install those printed parts and prevent the carriage from falling off the rail. We can now prepare the Y mounts for the stepper motors. And I redesigned this part many times and ended up with this. The objective was to support double share and make it easy to install the belts. And the stepper motor goes in like this with a small clearance to the bearing. You could use a shim. I didn't have any one thin, thin enough so I dropped that but you could use a 0.5 millimeter shim. I've also provided a Voron style jig to check the pulley height. The bearing is a 625 and you probably have a lot of those already. You just push it in to the mount, press it all the way down. The stepper motor should be installed in this orientation and make sure that there is a clearance if you're not using a shim so it's not resting against the plastic. You'll use some 35mm M3 but don't do that now, we'll do that later. I mentioned that you probably have some of those bearings already and you'll find them inside V-wheels like these. You have to take them apart of course, I've shown that in detail in my Voronish 2 build. I will insert a link for that. Getting back to this build we will now attach the Y motor mounts and they have two M5 bolt 10 millimeters long. With that completed we can use the M3 35 millimeter bolts and attach the stepper motor. The connector could face the rear of the printer or into the center of the printer. I have provided some 
clearance for the lead screw and there's nothing sticking out on this side. You'll then do just the same thing on the other side. Just make sure that this motor mount is flush with the top of the extrusion. And this is what it should look like completed. We will now do the front idlers and these are beefy idlers or rather a remix of a remix of the beefy idlers. They have a different type of attachment points. You can see those in the center of the black part. This part has been adapted for 9mm belts and uh, these idlers. To attach the idler you either use a bolt or a rod like I'm using these short M5 rods. I just had a 16 millimeters, it should be I believe 18, but I went with the 16 I had. And you'll then add M5 nuts, standard nuts. And a couple of M5 bolts. I didn't have the correct length, these are 5 millimeters too short. And that limited the range of the tensioner which isn't too good, so I have to replace these later when I get hold of some longer bolts. They go in like this. Pretty simple design and I like it. The remixed beefy idler housing attaches to the extrusion with two center bolts and then this part just slides in. This one is still missing the front part of the idler. And this is the complete part and it just slides in one way. As you might notice I'm not getting the full range of this tensioner when using these short bolts. I need to replace those. We'll do the same thing on the other side. With the y-axis sorted we can move on to the x-axis and this is the xy joiner and this is the idler side. You can see that by this just having one arm sticking out towards the center of the printer and it touches with M3 10 millimeter bolts. On the other side, that is the motor mount and XY joiner on the other side. And it has uh, one arm sticking out on each side. And as you can see, I accomplished the objective of having that arm move all the way back to the stepper motor. So I can use all the space available for me. A part of the X axis is uh, offset idler. I just use this to get the belt path correct and it uses a standard heat set insert, 3 millimeters. I'll then attach the idler with a 18 millimeter M3 bolt. I'm not a fan of these idlers with very tiny bearings. They tend to fail. I might replace this with something else. On the other hand, the load on this should be small. And the other side is just the same and these two parts are identical. Please make sure that you have these idlers in the correct orientation, not as I did in this build. The bolt head should be pointing up and not down like I did in this build and I had to correct that later. We'll then prepare the x-axis MGN rail by adding bolts and T-nuts. Please remember to secure this rail so the carriage doesn't slide off. With just one of the offset idlers installed you could slide in the rail. Slide it all the way to the offset idler and attach the other one on the other side. Use the centering tool, the same one we did on the y-axis and then tighten the rail to the extrusion. The 
This is the mounting bracket for the X idler and the X idler is a 20 teeth idler with M5 uh, bore. I'm using an M5 rod but you could use M5 bolt if you don't have a suitable length rod. But I recommend using a rod for this. This is a simple part. I considered doing this with CNC but uh, then I would have to redesign it so I didn't do that. You just install it by adding a couple of T-nuts and then slide it on to the rail. This part also serves as the tensioner for the X-axis so it should be able to move Both idlers should uh, spin freely by this point. I'm not going to tighten this fully as I will move this part later as part of tightening the belt on X. That should be fine. This is the motor mount on X, also a very simple part. Orientation of the stepper motor should be like this. I'm using a heat set insert, I apologize for using M4. M3 would be a little bit too small for my liking. And even if you don't have the tool for the M4, Heat set inserts you could use the M3 and just it works just fine for a single heat set insert. I have provided a jig for this pulley as well. You'll then install the motor mount just the way as you did with the X idler mount. At the position of this will be fixed later. We can then install the X axis onto the XY joiners. We need to find the correct position for each T-nut and this part can be a bit fiddly. In this footage you can see why the idler orientation matters. The bolt head will interfere with the XY joiner and that's why it has to be on the other side. It didn't take long to switch those two offset idlers but it was still annoying. Remember that M4 bolt, this is where it goes into the heat set insert. You will then need to tighten all the M5 bolts to the extrusion. We can then check the movement of the X and the Y axis without any belts attached. Seems to be fine. We are now ready to attach the belts and these are standard 6mm belts for the X axis. This is the Dragon burner mount. I modified this slightly as it is originally designed to have the opposite belt orientation with the teeth pointing out, not in towards the extrusion. I'll clamp one side lightly just so the belt doesn't fall out. The belt path on a printer like this is of course a lot easier than a Core XY and it should be pretty obvious where this belt will go. I'll then get the belt into the other side of the mount and uh, attach it. We'll then first attach it loosely, tighten the belt and then tighten the mount fully. This isn't uh, too bad, it didn't take long to get this pretty much spot on. We will then tighten the x-axis belt by pushing on the idler mount for the x-idler. And this is fine. Thank you. 
I'm happy with that and I'm doing this, no return from this point. I'll then check the movement of the x-axis and it moves okay but I notice a problem with this x-axis. This idler is really wobbly. This one looks fine. That one not so much, I'll fix that off camera. Moving on to the Y belts, I start off by attaching one end of the belt into the XY joiner. Just have to push this as far as you can. The belt path on this one is also obvious and uh, thankfully the redesigned motor mounts made it easy to get the belts around the pulley. It will then go to the beefy idler, around the beefy idler and back to the XY joiner. Tighten it as much as you can and then push it into the XY joiner. Use some pliers to push the belt all the way in. You will then need to adjust the beefy idlers to get the correct tension. And you should remember to set these tensions all the way back before adding the belts. With that done, we can check the movement of the x-axis, moving it all the way to the front. Check that it doesn't bind. And we'll then move it back all the way. This is what the offset idler should look like in the correct position. And this is much better. We have now completed this very important part of the build and we will continue next time with the tool head and some wiring. Hope to see you back then and bye for now.